Yeah, it's really hard to say. I mean, it has changed drastically, but there's still some underliers there when you look at it that um, people just don't believe that they're going to raise rates in December. Um, clearly, I do, and I think the data does support that. Um, as you were just mentioning before I came on, I mean, the, the November number is big, but it's not a huge, uh, huge uh, differenti uh, differentiator unless that number comes out as an outlier. Um, I think one thing that U.S. market continually gets wrong, the investors here, is that it really doesn't matter that they raise rates. It only matters because they said they would. I think what really matters is the trajectory, like how, how fast are they going to raise rates. And I think actually the market um, is a little bit too optimistic with how fast and how high rates will go. Given, Larry, that the, that the market is so well prepared for a rate hike potentially in December, how do you think markets will respond? I think they'll, they'll respond uh, going back to their fundamentals. I mean, clearly, uh, the markets have had a lot of chance to respond to this, to digest this, to think about it. Um, I think, you know, I, I'm worried about the other, other side of the equation. If they don't raise rates, I think that would be disastrous for the market. Um, the fact that, you know, I think right now, we're seeing confidence in the equity market for whatever reason, and also the bond markets. Uh, corporate yields um, have gotten a little bit more liquid. I think it's just going to be a very good thing and we'll, we'll return to fundamentals. So very much the Fed's still in focus, but of, of course China as well, because um, not only over the weekend did we see weak data coming through, but of course those weak inflation numbers as well. It seems like that's also weighed on, on sentiment on, on US markets. I mean, was that creating a, a little bit of nervousness once again today? Yeah, you know, not, not as much today. And as you mentioned, CPI, uh, even X, uh, um, X Energy came out pretty weak. PPI was pretty soft as well. Uh, but I think the market is expecting numbers weaker than expected, as it were. Um, we have a slew of numbers coming out of China tonight. Um, if they come out consistently bad, yeah, yeah, that will weigh on sentiment, it will weigh on the market. But I don't think it's going to weigh on the Fed at this point. I think the worst is behind us. As you say, I mean, we are still waiting to see what the rest of this data will show. A lot of it coming out today, um, our time here being Wednesday. But, I mean, assuming they aren't particularly strong, does that softness in those inflation numbers provide the PBOC with the green light to ease, ease policy further? Yeah, no, I think it does. And um, honestly, I think that might be part of the reason that the market's not too upset with the weak CPI and PPI because it's going to give them the green light and uh, to, to cut rates, uh, which we know uh, temporarily anyway seems to be good for um, markets. So that might be one reason. And I think, yeah, the market is thinking that exactly. Larry, it's Gaurav Soda here. Um, conditions in China aren't particularly tight. If you look at monetary conditions, um, will, the, will any sort of uh, rate cut make much difference or is this more of a symbolic gesture? Oh, that's a great point. I do think it's symbolic because things are very tight and that's not actually the problems as you probably would concur. But I think uh, China just falling in line with the rest of the banks around the world to cut rates, even as a symbolic gesture, will do wonders for the capital markets, at least, uh, you know, on the short term uh, until further notice. Yes. I just wanted to ask you about those, those um, broader U.S. markets. I mean, despite the halt that we are seeing this week, those U.S. equities really have been rallying. And I guess they do seem to be looking past earnings and the weakness in sales, as well as the, the problems stemming, I guess, from China and, and those emerging markets. Um, is this surprising to you? Yeah, you know, it's, it's not that surprising because, you know, I'm, I've been trained, like a lot of us, for, uh, for a long time that the market looks past these things. I mean, poor earnings, poor sales. You know, I think what um, really surprises me is that the market seems to be operating on one leg, and that's services. We know manufacturing is not <laughs> operating whatsoever. And it's very strange to me with the lack of production in the U.S., with all the other good things going on, that our market is sitting as high as it is. Um, emerging markets definitely is something um, I, I was concerned with, but I do believe that banks are well, are much better funded than they were back in the crisis of 2006 through 2008, uh, and, and they're a lot more dependent on um, internal capital than external capital. So it made, made the crisis much different. It's really hard for bondholders 
bond holders and portfolio managers, but not as much on fluctuations in currency. Larry, it's Gorev here again. Um, I, I, many people have pointed out that uh, profits as a percentage of GDP in corporate America is about as high as they ever have been. Is there? Is that a source of optimism yep. or is that a source of risk going forward? How, how do you view that sort of information? Yeah, you know, I think more the former than the latter. And I think right now in the U.S., what's propelling us is that broad consumer discretionary. We have low energy prices, low inflation. We have that wealth effect of house prices going up or at least not going down anymore. And also the job market definitely is better than it was even a year ago. So I think that consumer discretionary is carrying the day with the sales. I mean, I have to point out, though, one thing is like tech. Uh, some people just think that tech's doing really well or will do well, but if you strip out Google and Apple, uh, you know, the revenues there are just as bad uh, as they were, like would be in, in the industrial sector in the S&P 500, because their exposure to foreign markets is uh, just as high, if not higher. So um, I think it's the this, this sector that we talk about when it comes to confidence in the stock market.